Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy to be with you. Nifureha kuwa na nyinyi. And I uh, want to bring the greetings of the Lord to you. Nataka nilete salamu za Bwana kwenu. That God cares about you. Kwamba Mungu anakujali. And want the best to happen to you. Na Mungu anataka mambo mema yatendeke kwenu. Today I will talk about how to have a deeper relationship with God. Nataka kuzungumzia jinsi ya kuwa na uhusiano wa kindani na Mungu. And you motivate each one of us to have the motivation to na, want to have a deep relationship with God. Na kusaidia watu wa kuwe na ile tamanio ya kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. You know that God created the universe. Unajua kwamba Mungu aliumba ulimwengu wote. He's wonderful in his creation, right? Yeye ni waajabu katika maumbile yake, si ndio? Everything is created is wonderful. Kila kitu alichokiumba ni cha ajabu. And everything is in his hand. Na kila kitu kiko kwenye mikono zake. Then if we follow him and have a good relationship with him, kama tutamfuata na tukuwe na uhusiano mwema na yeye, then we'll be blessed. Tutabarikiwa. But many people think they can run away from God. Na watu wengine ufikiria kwamba wanaweza wakamtoroka Mungu. They just live a life their old way. Wanaishi tu maisha yao jinsi wanavyotaka. But when you believe God is almighty. Lakini kama utamwamini kwamba Mungu ni mkuu. God is full of love. Kwamba Mungu amejaa na upendo. His creation is wonderful. Maumbile yake ni ya ajabu. And he has great love for each one of us. Na hapo na upendo mwingi kwa kila mmoja. And then I want to have that close relationship with him. Nataka na sasa unataka kuwa na ule uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. And then you would be blessed. Na utabarikiwa sasa. Uh, I share with you I believe in Jesus in 1970. Ndashiriki nanyi nikiwaambia kwamba mimi nilimwe nilimwamini Kristo mwaka wa 70. And I became a pastor in 1983. Na mwaka wa 83 nikafanyika kuwa mchungaji. And then in 1998 that is 15 years after I became a pastor. Na mwaka wa 98 sasa ni miaka 10 na mitano nikisha kuwa katika huduma ya uchungaji. And evangelist lay hand on me. Na mwinjilisti akaniwekea mikono. And I experienced great power enter me like electricity. Na nikasikia nguvu kubwa zikiniingia mithili ya stima. And I feel great love of God fill my heart. Na nikahisi upendo mkubwa wa Mungu umejaza roho yangu. And then I said I didn't know I can have that relationship with God. Na nikasema hai kumbe sikujua naweza kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu hivyo na Mungu. I didn't know that I can experience his love like that. Sikujua kwamba naweza nikahisi upendo wa Mungu sample hiyo. And you know we all can have that close relationship. Unajua sisi sote tunaweza kuwa na ule uhusiano wa karibu and experience God all the time. Na tukamuhisi Mungu kila wakati. So I found that we can experience his love. Kwa hivyo tunaweza kuona kwamba tunaweza tukahisi upendo wake. And you can experience his love too. Na unaweza ukahisi upendo wa Mungu pia. When I experience the love of God, nilipohisi upendo wa Mungu, I said, "Wow, this is wonderful." Nilisema, "Ha, hili ni la ajabu." It's like experiencing part of heaven. Ni kama jinsi ya kuhisi zile nguvu za mbinguni which I never experienced before ambazo hajawahi zihisi siku yoyote so I really want that relationship kwa hivyo nikataka ule uhusiano and when I went home that day you know at first in a meeting I kept praying to God nilipokuwa katika mkutano niliendelea kumuomba Mungu kept appreciating God na nikaanza kumshukuru Mungu And on the way home I want to keep praising God. Na sasa nikiwa katika njia kurudi nyumbani nilitaka niendelee kumsifu Mungu. In the bus I want to keep praising and want to raise my hand to praise God. Na sasa nilipokuwa katika gari la umma nikataka ninue mikono zangu niendelee kumsifu Mungu. But it was in a public transportation. Lakini sasa nilikuwa ni katika gari la umma. So I cannot just raise my hand and praise God. Na sasa singeinua mkono kwenye gari nikaanza kumsifu Mungu. So I put my hand against the window. Sasa niliweka mkono wangu kwenye dirisha. So it doesn't look so obvious. Sasa haionekani kwa inaonekana kama ni kitu ya kawaida tu. And then I kept praising God and love God. Na nikaendelea kumsifu Mungu na kumpenda Mungu. Lord you're so wonderful. Nikamwambia Mungu wewe ni waajabu. I didn't know that I can have that close relationship with you. Sikujua kwamba naweza kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na wewe. At that moment when the evangelist lay hand on me, wakati mwinjilisti aliponiwekea mikono, I also felt burdens go away. Nilisikia kwamba machukizo yote yameondoka. I felt great peace in me. Nikasikia amani kubwa ndani mwangu. And I swell, smelled a sweet smell. Na nikaanza kusikia ile kuhisi ile harufu ya manukato. I believe it's a smell from heaven. Naamini kwamba ni manukato yatokayo mbinguni. My whole person just felt very light 
Mimi mwili wangu wote nikaahisi kwamba uko mwepesi. It's like being in heaven. Ni kama kuwa kule mbinguni. And I want to stay in that condition. Na nilitaka kuishi katika hali hiyo. When I went home it was already very late. Na nilipoenda nyumbani ilikuwa sasa masaa yameyoma kabisa. I kept loving God. Niliendelea kumpenda Mungu. And the next morning I woke up and said God you're so good. Na asubuhi ilipofika nikasema kwamba Mungu wewe ni mwema. It's so wonderful that I can experience you like that. Nila ajabu kwamba naweza nikakuhisi jinsi hivyo. So next day I spent more time praying to God. Siku nyingine sasa nikachukua muda wangu kumuomba Mungu. And one day when I cried to Jesus. Na wakati mwingine nilipomlilia Kristo, I said, "Lord Jesus." Nikasema, "Yesu Bwana." He very power went through me. Nikasikia tena nguvu zinaniingia. I said, "That is wonderful." Nikasema, "Hilo ni la ajabu." I could immediately experience the response of God. Nilisikia Mungu akinijibu wakati huo. So I cried again. Tena nikalia mara tena. Lord Jesus. Yesu Bwana. And the power came again. Na nguvu zikakuja tena. And then later one day when in a meeting I experienced the joy of the Lord. Na siku ingine nikiwa katika mkutano nikaanza kuhisi tena furaha ya Bwana. I was filled with the joy of the Lord. Nikajazwa na furaha ya Bwana. And I want to keep that joy. Na nilitaka niweke ile furaha. So in the meeting I kept loving God. Sasa katika mkutano niliendelea kumpenda Mungu. And I kept experiencing the joy. Na niliendelea kuhisi furaha ya Bwana. It's like this hallelujah. Ilikuwa ni kama hallelujah hallelujah. The joy keep flowing me. Sasa furaha inaendelea kububujika. When I went home I want to keep that joy also. Nilitaka nilienda nyumbani pia nilitaka niweke ile furaha tena. Again it was in a public bus. Na tena ilikuwa katika gari la umma. But I just stay in the joy of the Lord with uh, by loving God but without laughing out loudly. Niliendelea kuishi kukaa katika ile furaha ya Bwana pasipo kucheka kwa kicheko cha juu. Like this. Alikuwa anafanya kwa gari jinsi mnavyoona akifanya hivyo. So I felt the joy of the Lord and I keep loving God. Akasikia ni furaha ya Bwana akaendelea kumfurahia Mungu. And when I went home I kept the joy of the Lord. Na nilipoenda nyumbani pia nikaweka ile furaha ya Bwana. And the next day and every day after that. Siku nyingine na siku zingine zote zilizofuata. You know this is what the Bible has promised. Unajua hiki ndicho Biblia imetuahidi. In Romans 5:5 katika Warumi 5:5 Warumi tano tano. That it says that the Holy Spirit will pour the love of God into our hearts. Ya kwamba Roho Mtakatifu amenimwagilia upendo katika moyo wangu. That we can experience his love. Ili kwamba tunaweza tukahisi upendo wake. And also the Bible says the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love, joy. Na pia maandiko yanasema kwamba matunda ya Roho Mtakatifu ni upendo, amani na furaha. So the Holy Spirit can bring great joy. Sasa Roho Mtakatifu aweza kuleta furaha kuu. Now every time when I pray now, na kila dakika ninapoomba sasa, I can experience his peace and his love. Naweza hisi, naweza hisi upendo wake, amani yake na um furaha yake. For me now, it's I can understand how heaven is like. Kwa hivyo mimi naweza nikaelewa jinsi vile mbingu linavyokaa. Every time I pray, kila wakati ninapoomba, I can feel the joy and the love flowing through me. Ninaweza hisi upendo na amani ikinitawala. And his power going through me. Na ni kama nguvu kuniingia ndani. It's really enjoyable. Ni kitu cha kusherekea. You can all enjoy the relationship with God. Waweza pia burudika uhusiano wako kati yako na Mungu. No no need to I enjoy it myself. Sio kwamba ni yeye peke yake awezaye kusherekea upendo wa Mungu. I pray for many people. Ninawaombea watu wengi. I saw the sickness different sicknesses heal. Ninaona magonjwa tofauti na sample nyingi ikiponywa. Even a woman with cancer, the cancer went away right away. Hata mwanamke aliyekuwa na saratani, saratani iliponyeka. And I saw different kind of sickness heal. Na nimeona ugonjwa wa sample tofauti ukiponywa. People with depression they experience the joy of the Lord. Watu walioshushwa roho wanahisi furaha ya Bwana. And demons being driven out. Na mapepo yanaondolewa. Like yesterday in a meeting I led Uh, in another church kama jana tulipokuwa katika mkutano akiongoza uombezi there were a few people with demons driven out kulikuwa na watu ambao mapepo yalifukuzwa jana and these people feel great when the demons <coughs> went away na hao watu walisikia vizuri wakati mapepo akinokwaro alikuwa amefukuza imeenda so not only do i enjoy god any time kwa hivyo sio mimi tu peke yangu ambaye naweza nikasherekea furaha ya bwana but i can bring the blessings of god to many people lakini pia naweza peleka baraka za bwana kwa watu wengi 
Now many people didn't know that having the consolation she with God is so wonderful. Watu wengi hawajafahamu kwamba kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu ni jambo la ajabu. And then many people just look at the difficulties. Na unajua sasa watu wengi wanatazamia tu ile hali ngumu peke yake. And then they'll say life is difficult. Na unasema kwamba hai maisha ni magumu. It's life is you know full of pain. Oh maisha haya yamejazwa na machungu. It's hard to get money. Ni vigumu kupata hela. And and people don't feel happy. Na sasa watu hawafurahi because God is almighty. Manake Mungu ni mkuu. Everything in the world belongs to him. Kila chochote ulimwengu ni chake. When we don't follow God, kama hatumfuati Mungu, then we won't get the extra blessings from God. Hatutapata hizi baraka zingine zitokazo kwa Mungu. But when we follow God, lakini kama tunamfuata Mungu, and have a close relationship with him, na ukwe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu, his blessings will flow to you. Baraka zake zitakufuata. And you can enjoy life. Na unaweza ukaburudika maisha. God will all provide for you. Manake Mungu atapeana chochote kile unahitaji. One time when I went to the mission field, siku nyingine alipokuwa katika mkutano katika mkutano wa kiumishenari, I saw farmers that believe in Jesus. Aliona wakulima walioamini katika Kristo. And then they said after they believe they believe in Jesus, na baada hao watu kuamini katika Kristo and and have a close relationship with Jesus. Na wakawa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. And then they found that they have more crops than before. Na sasa walipata kwamba wakati huo walikuwa na mazao mengi ya shambani kuliko vile wanakuanga nayo. And also there were less rats in the field to eat the crop. Na sasa pia tulikuwa na panya wachache katika lile shamba kukula mimea hizo. They experienced the blessings of God. Walihisi baraka za Mungu. And I myself too. Na hata mimi pia. I experience all kinds of blessings. Mimi huwa ninahisi kila aina yote ya baraka. You know you look at nature. Unajua ukiangalia maumbile, God created the beautiful crops. Mungu aliumba mimea ya kuvutia. Beautiful trees and birds. Ndege wale nyuni wa angani na hata mimea maua ya kuvutia. And a wonderful body. Na pia mwili ambao ni wa ajabu. When you believe that, I hope you believe it totally. Ukiamini hiyo na naamini kwamba utaamini kabisa kabisa. Don't believe in Jesus and then say I have to rely on myself. Usiamini katika Kristo alafu unasema kwamba kuna vitu vingine pia ambavyo unataka kuoziamini. But believe that God can provide you with everything good. Lakini amini kwamba Mungu anaweza akakupa chochote kile ambacho unahitaji. So you want to have the close relationship with God. Kwa hivyo inafaa ukuwe na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. And also with the close relationship with God. Na pia katika kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. You experience joy and peace and love. Unahisi upendo, amani na furaha. Then life becomes enjoyable. Maisha inakuwa ni ya kuburudika. Now I want to share with you how God has blessed me in different ways. Nataka nishiriki na nyinyi jinsi Mungu alivyonibariki katika nyanja tofauti. I'm 65 years old already. Niko na miaka 65 kwa msahi. But God keeps my body healthy and strong. Lakini Mungu ananipa nguvu bado niko na nguvu. And I play tennis. Na yeye huwa anacheza ule mchezo wa tenisi ile mpira wa vikapu ule. And I'm strong. Na niko kwa na nguvu. And healthy. Na niko mzima wa afya. And I have good eyesight. Na niko na macho sawa sawa ya kuona. There are people who are 20 years younger than I. Kuna watu ambao ni wa wa, um, wa miaka 20 midogo kwake. When they saw me read small letters. Wanaponiona mimi nikisoma zile nukta ndogo. They said, "Can you read the small letters?" Wanamuuliza, "Je, kwani unaweza soma hizi letters ndogo herufi ndogo hizi?" I can, I said, "I can read it without I classes. Ewambia naweza soma pasipo kuwa na macho ine. You know when God knows that you love him, unajua Mungu akijua kwamba unampenda, he will bless you with everything. Atakubariki na kila chochote kile. That you have more health and ya, better health and more joy. Atakupa furaha na atakupa afya njema. And God will make ways open for you to bless other people. Na Mungu pia atakuandalia njia ili na ukapate kubariki wengine. Now this is a picture of me and my wife. Hiyo ni picha ya yeye na mke wake. God has given me the best wife. Mungu amempa mwanamke wa kipekee. I went to different places. Nimeenda katika maeneo tofauti. I haven't found another woman so wonderful as a wife. Sijawahi pata mwana mtu mwingine ambaye ni ajabu kama huyu mke. She loves me very much. Mke wake yuampenda zaidi. And she cares about everything my life. Na yeye anajali kila kitu katika maisha yake. Sometimes when we sleep, wakati mwingine tunapolala, 
and she has to go to work early in the morning. But sometimes she just kept staring at me on the bed. I told her, go to sleep now because you have to go to work early. And then she said, let me look at you longer. And then after we're eating, after we eat, we wash the dishes together. Sometimes she has a lot to do in a school. So I told her, tonight you're very busy, so go to work, you know, do your work in a school. But she said, let me just stay with you that I can enjoy this time with you. You know, when you love God, God can give you the best. And of course, I want to do my best to keep the blessings of God to you. I really love her and care about her. And appreciate everything she has done for us. For and whenever we go home together, I always rush to get the slippers for her. And she would do the same for me too. When we brush teeth together, we always try to get the toothpaste for the other person on the toothbrush. Whatever we do, we try to do the, do the things for the other person. Because I want to keep the blessings of God. And I went to many places, people have found the teaching very helpful. But God has given me this wife who can give me good suggestions. How to do better in my ministry. And then when she gives me suggestions, she always gives it in a very gentle way. So I thank God for this great gift. When God knows your heart, when God knows that you love Him, He'll bless you in every way. Do you believe that? Do you believe in an Almighty God? Do you believe in a loving God? So when you believe that God is Almighty and loving, then you will say that to have the close relationship is the best, is the most important thing in our lives. And you will say loving him and praying to him is the most. It's the most important thing in my life. Now, if you know, pay attention to me. You notice that when I'm not preaching or helping someone, very often you see me praying. My eyes may not be open. But you notice that I'm loving God from my heart. Because I really like God. I really appreciate God for everything He has done. And I hope that you say, Yes, Lord, I want to follow you. You know, I have put many videos on the internet. If you have the chance to get on the internet, go to YouTube or Facebook. Look for Pastor Yip, Y-I-P. And then you can see many of my videos. Many teachings. 
and also many people sharing what they experience when I pray for them. Na watu wengi wakitoa ushuhuda jinsi walivyohisi wakati amewaombea. Or what they experience when I counsel them. Ama wakili amba wanachohisi wakati napo washauri. Many people get helped. Watu wengi wanapata kusaidika. And many of these people came to me. Na hawa watu wengi wote walinikujia. And asked for help. Na wakauliza usaidizi. These people are from different parts of the world. Hawa watu utoka kwenye tabaka zote za ulimwengu. And I thank God for the internet phone. Na nashukuru mungu kwa sababu ya mtandao huo. And I can pray for these people. Na naeza nikaombea watu hao. And they receive help. Na wanapata usaidizi. I also heard from some people. Pia niko na watu that they were in trouble ambao walikuwa kwenye matatizo and they prayed to god na walipomwomba mungu and god moved in the heart to search in the internet na mungu akawa akawaelekeza waende kwenye mtandao ili wamtafute kwenye internet and then they saw my video na sasa wakaona kanda zake also some people said god spoke to them to look for help from pastor yep watu wengine wanamwambia kwamba mungu ndiye aliyetuma ili tukapate kusaidizi kutoka kwa mchungaji yep God told some people to learn from me. Mungu aliambia watu wajifunze kutoka kwake. To learn my life. Ili wajifunze maisha yake. Now when I heard this I say Lord I'm not worthy. Na niliposikia haya nilisema kwamba Mungu mimi si staili. I'm not saying I'm good by myself. Sisemi kwamba mimi ni mwema kabisa. I have failed God many times. Nimemfeli Mungu mara nyingi. I've sinned many times. Na pia nafanya dhambi wakati mwingi. But God turned me around. Lakini Mungu anibadilisha. Especially in the instance in 1998 when I Aswa sana katika ule mwaka wa 98 wakati mwingilisa aliponiwekea mikono. God drew me with his great love. Mungu alinivuta na upendo wake. And change me. Na akanigeuza. And then I responded with love toward God. Na sasa nikaitikia na upendo kwa Mungu. I really put God in the first place in my life. Mimi huwa ninamweka Mungu mbele katika maisha yangu. And I'm willing to go to different countries. Na niko tayari kwenda katika nchi tofauti. To the people there. Ili kubariki watu huko. And God sees my heart. Na Mungu anaona roho yangu. And God will send people to look for me. Na Mungu anatuma watu wanitafute. God will do the same to you too. Mungu atakufanyia vivyo hivyo pia. When you love God, kama unampenda Mungu, you see your life will go higher and higher. Unaona maisha yako ikiniliwa juu na juu zaidi. You will enjoy life, utaanza kusherekea maisha. You will enjoy praying, uta utasherekea kuomba. You enjoy praying for other people. Utasherekea kuombea watu wengine. And you find your life very meaningful. Na utapata maisha yako yakiwa ya muhimu zaidi. You say I'm happy to be alive. Utasema kwamba niko na furaha kuwa mzima. I'm happy to be a child of God. Niko na furaha kuwa mwana wa Mungu. But many Christians live a life like this. Lakini wakristo wengi wanaishi maisha ya sambuli hii. Oh, it's difficult. Oh, ni ngumu. Problem in family. Mimi ana na familia. I'm happy in the heart. Mimi sina furaha moyoni mwangu. Health problem. Oh, matatizo ni mengi. And some people, some Christian even say. Na hata wengine wao wanajiuliza wakisema, Jesus come back soon so I don't have to suffer so much. Yesu kuja haraka maana yake mimi sitaki kuteseka sana. Now do you want to live like that? Je, ungelipenda kuishi hivyo? Life is difficult. Maisha ni magumu. Let me tell you. Acheni niwaambie. The Bible says that when we don't follow God, Biblia nasema kwamba kama hatutamfuata Mungu, there will be different kinds of problems. Tutakuwa na matatizo ya sampuli tofauti. But when we have close relationship with God, lakini kama tuko na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu, his blessings will come to you. Baraka zake zitakufuata. Because God blesses the whole world with different kinds of blessings. Manake Mungu anabariki dunia mzima na baraka tofauti nyingi You look around everything is beautiful. Ukitazama kando kando kile chochote kile ni kizuri kinavutia. And God can give you those blessings. Na Mungu aweze akakupa hizo baraka pia. Do you hunger for God? Je, uko na shauku na Mungu? Not just when a pastor tells you to pray. Sio tu unaomba wakati mchungaji anasema kwamba omba. But you say God you're so good. Lakini mwenyewe unaomba unasema kwamba Mungu wewe ni mwema. I want to follow you. Nataka nikufuate. You know, I'm happy to bless people, help people. Unajua niko na furaha sana kubariki na kusaidia watu. So I'm happy to be with people. Kwa hivyo mimi nafurahia kuwa na watu. But I'm also very happy to be alone. Lakini pia niko na furaha kuwa peke yangu. Whenever I'm alone, popote niko peke yangu. Whether I'm the, on the bus, nikiwa hata ndani ya gari, I'm brushing my teeth, labda na sugua meno yangu, or walking to places, ama ninatembea nikienda mahali, I'll be loving God. Nitakuwa katika 
kupenda Mungu. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Anytime I think of Jesus, kila wakati ninapofikiria kumhusu Yesu, my heart is filled with the joy of the Lord. Moyo wangu unajazwa na furaha ya Bwana. Filled with the love of God. Inajazwa na upendo wa Bwana. And my whole body feel comfort. Na mwili wangu wote unasikia kufarijika. In this few days when I am here, kwa hizo siku chache ambazo niko hapa, many people experience this same thing. Watu wengi wameshuhudia mambo haya. They experience peace, love, joy, comfort. Wameshuhudia wame amani upendo na kutulizwa and i tell you you can keep experiencing god like that na ninakwambia pia wewe unaweza ukamhisi mungu kwa njia hiyo if you really like god from your heart kama unampenda mungu kutoka kwenye kitovu cha moyo wako his blessings will come to you all the time baraka zake zitakufuata kila mahali now here i want to talk a little bit about the love of god kwa hivyo hapa nataka kuzungumzia kidogo kuhusu upendo wa mungu because many people think Well God doesn't know who I am. Manake watu wengi hufikiria kwamba ah Mungu hata anitambui jinsi nilivyo. I'm too unimportant. Na kwamba mimi ni mtu wa muhimu. Well God likes those great Christians. Ama Mungu anapenda wale watu ni wa Kristo wakubwa wakubwa. I'm too weak. Mimi ni mdhaifu. So many people think like that. Watu wengi hufikiria hivyo. But the Bible tells us that. Lakini Biblia inatuambia kwamba that God really likes us. Kwamba Mungu kwa kweli yuwatupenda. That he cares about each one of us. Anajali kila mmoja wetu. In Luke chapter 19 verse 10. Katika Luka 19 mstari wa 10, Luka 19 mstari wa 10. For the son of man came to seek and to save who are lost. Mwana wa Adamu alikuja kutafuta na kuokoa wale waliopotea. That Jesus came to seek and to save. Kwamba Yesu alikuja kutafuta na kuokoa. Now for myself I was raised up in a non-christian family. Mimi kibinafsi nilelewa katika familia ambayo sio ya wakristo. When I was young I thought there was no god. Na sasa wakati huo nilikuwa nafikiria kwamba Mungu hayuko. But God spoke to me first through a physics book, a science book. Lakini Mungu alinenea mara ya kwanza kupitia katika kitabu cha wanasayansi and the writer wrote na mwandishi aliandika the world is full of wonderful design ulimwengu umejazwa na maumbile ya kuvutia that this could come from god who created the world na hizi zinaweza kuwa zilitoka katika mungu aliyeumba ulimwengu and when i read that i said wow a scientist why would a scientist say that niliposoma nikasema haya mwanasayansi mbona akaandika hivyo do scientists also believe in god je kwani wanasayansi pia wanamwamini mungu because i thought at that time that you know i only live to up to a certain age and then I die and disappear. Manake mimi nilijua nitaishi kufikia kiwango fulani alafu niwe na nipote nife na nipotee kabisa. When I heard that there is God I became very interested. Lakini sasa nilipojisikia kwamba kuna Mungu sasa nikakuwa na mvuto. And then God arranged Christians to help me. Na Mungu akaandaa wakristo ili wanifikie. And then I remember in the evangelistic meeting that I believe in Jesus. Na sasa ninakumbuka katika mkutano wa kiwinjilisti nilipomwamini Mungu. The preacher talked about Jesus. Muhubiri alinena kuhusu Yesu. And then at the end he asked us who is willing to believe in Jesus. Na alipouliza kwamba ni nani yako tayari kumwamini Kristo? And my heart was pumping. Now moyo wangu ulikuwa unadundadunda sana. I fell off You know a, a force coming to me a voice speaking to me Nilihisi nikana kwamba kuna nguvu zinaniingia na sauti ikaninenea because I really want to follow God if there is a real God Manake nilitaka kumfuata Mungu kama kwa kweli kuna Mungu wa kweli And I want to raise my hand Na nilitaka kuinua mkono wangu But I was afraid lakini nilikuwa na uoga And then he asked again and again Na akauliza mara tena 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 Finally raise my hand Mwishowe nikainua mkono wangu And then I felt some power enter me. Na nikasikia ni nguvu zinaniingia. I felt burdens go away. Nikasikia mizigo imeenda. I felt light shine on me. Nikasikia mwangaza unanimulikia. I felt I, I, was, I was changed. Nikasikia nimebadilishwa. And then they gave me a correspondence course. Na sasa wakanipea somo fulani that helped me to understand God. Nilionisaidia kumuelewa Mungu. But at that time no one lead me to a church lakini wakati ule hakuna yeyote aliyenielekeza kanisani but i noticed that when i do something wrong when i sin i notice 
I feel like uncomfortable. Lakini nikagundua kwamba wakati ambapo ninapofanya kitu kibaya ama dhambi nasikia kwamba sijatulia. So I told a Christian friend. Sasa nikaambia mkristaya aliyekuwa rafiki yangu. I don't know why, but now when I when I do something wrong, I feel bad in my heart. Sijui ni kwa nini lakini ninapofanya tu jambo baya nasikia kwamba moyo wangu umechokeshwa sana. And then he told me that is the work of the Holy Spirit on you. Akaniambia kwamba hiyo ni kazi ya Roho Mtakatifu kwako. So that is God, how God saved me. Hivyo ndivyo Mungu alivyoniokoa. The first he used a science book. Ya kwanza alitumia mwanasayansi kuandika kitabu. And then he used different people to help me. Na akatumia watu tofauti kunisaidia. And then in the meeting The Holy Spirit kept talking to me. Na sasa katika mkutano Roho Mtakatifu akaendelea kuninenea. And I felt touched by God. Na nikasikia nimeguzwa na Mungu. And then when I believe in Jesus. Na sasa nilipomwamini Kristo. I felt light and joy. Nikasikia kwamba niko mwepesi na nikahisi furaha. Burdens go away. Na mizigo imeondolewa. So God was seeking me all this time wakati huu wote Mungu kumbe alikuwa ananitafuta. Now each person's experience is different. Kila mmoja huwa anahisi tofauti. But God would have used different method to draw you to him. Lakini Mungu anatumia njia tofauti ili kukuvuta wewe. He used different people to speak to you. Anatumia watu tofauti kukuzungumzia. And maybe he used the nature to attract you. Ama labda anatumia maumbile kukuleta katika upendo. He also speak to your heart. Na pia ananena kwenye roho yako. Now let me ask you have you experienced this God coming to seek you and draw you to him. Wacheni niwauliza je, mshawahi shuhudia nikana kwamba Mungu anakutafuta na anataka umtumikie? If you have experienced that please raise your Kama ushawahi kuwa katika hiyo hali ukainue mkono wako. That you you saw how God draw you to Jesus. Ya kwamba unaweza kumbuka jinsi Mungu alivyokuvuta ili uamini Kristo. Could you raise your hand? Ibu kainue mkono wako. So you also experience that. Pia nyinyi mwaweza kusikia hayo. You know that is the love of God. Unajua huo ni upendo wa Mungu. He doesn't wait for you to seek him. Mungu haangoji ili kwamba wewe ukamtafute. God came to seek you. Mungu alikuja kukutafuta. So God sees you as someone important. Kwa hivyo Mungu anakuona kama wewe mtu wa muhimu. He does not despise you. Hakudharau huyu Mungu. He treasures you. Lakini anakudhamani. And he came to seek you. Na alikuja kukutafuta. So you know that God really loves you. Sasa unajua kwamba kwa kweli Mungu anakupenda. Because many people say, "Oh, I have so many difficulties." Manake watu wengi husema kwamba niko na matatizo mingi tofauti. God doesn't care about me. Mungu hanijali mimi. You know, I want to tell you that difficulties doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Nataka niwaambie kwamba hali ngumu haimaanishi kwamba Mungu hakupendi. Because when Adam sinned, manake wakati Adamu alipotenda dhambi, God told Adam. Mungu alimwambia Adamu, when you work on a field, it will grow thorns and thistles. Na ile lile shamba ambalo utakuwa unafanya kazi kutakuwa na miba na mimea zingine tofauti. Because men have sinned. Manake mwanadamu amekwisha kutenda dhambi. There will always be difficulties and suffering in the world. Utakuwa na ugumu na matatizo ulimwenguni. But it doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Lakini doesn't love you. Haimaanishi kwamba Mungu hakupendi. God want to help you in the difficulties. Mungu anataka akusaidie katika hali ngumu. God want to bless you with different blessings. Mungu anataka akubariki na baraka tofauti. So that you can enjoy in a in the midst of difficulties. Ili kwamba pia unaweza ukaburudika hata kama uko katika hali ngumu. You know since I believe in Jesus, wakati nilipomwamini Yesu, God opens ways for me. Mungu alinifungulia njia. I came from a very poor family. Nilitoka katika familia iliyokuwa maskini, but God gave me the chance to have much education. Lakini Mungu alinisaidia nikakuwa na elimu nyingi zaidi. According to my own fi- financial situation, kulingana na hali yangu ya kifedha, I would not be able to have that. Mimi singestahili kuwa na elimu kama hiyo. When I was young my father always gambled. My father always gambled when I was young. Alipokuwa mdogo babake alikuwa mle mle mtu wa kucheza kamari, hupa zikarata, hupa isimbi, vitu kama hizo. My family was always our money. Na sasa familia yetu kila wakati haikuwa na pesa. And when I was young sometimes I ate rice with mold on it. Na sasa alipokuwa mdogo alikuwa anakula ile mchele mchele kukupurulukuhu. Some of the rice I ate was green or red from the mold. Na unapata kwamba ile mchele wakati mwingine ilikuwa ni, ni ya manjanos, wakati mwingine ni nyekundu. And sometimes I just have rice. Na 
and just have rice and some soy sauce put onto it. Soy sauce? Soy sauce, you know. Oh, wakati mwingine alikuwa nakula mchele na ile soup ilikuwa inaikuwa kwa mchele ilikuwa inatoka kwa soya beans. So soya sauce. So no f- no vegetable or other meat. Akukuwa na nyama ama atukuwa na mboga za majani. So I grew up in that situation. Mimi niliishi katika hiyo hali. But God opened a way for me that I have much education. Lakini Mungu akamsaidia akapata elimu ya zaidi. I have a college degree and two seminary degrees, master degrees. Yeye ako na master degrees na pia ako na degrees zingine mbili katika masomo ya kibiblia. It was someone who offered to help me. Alikuwa tu mtu aliyejitoa kumsaidia. When I did not ask for help. Na yeye pia hakwenda kutafuta msaada. God will open the way for you. Mungu atakufungulia njia. Now I don't know what will happen to you. Sijui kile kitakutendekea. But the Bible says. Lakini Biblia inasema. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Ukautafute kwamba ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake na mambo yote mengine utaongezewa. That if you seek the kingdom of God, ya kwamba unapotafuta ufalme wa Mungu, you want more people saved, unataka watu wengi wapate wokovu, and you want Jesus to be your Lord, na unataka Yesu awe bwana wako, that he is the king in your heart, kwamba akuwe mfalme katika moyo wako, and his righteousness means to obey him, uta uh, haki yake inamaanisha kumtii, and all these things will be added to you, na haya mambo mengine yote yataongezewa. And I found that true. Na nilipata hiyo kuwa kweli. And many people have found that true. Na watu wengi wamepata hayo yakiwa ya ukweli. Let me ask you how many of you experienced help from God since you became a Christian? Did you raise your hand? Hebu ni waulize wakati ulipoanza kuwa mkristo ni je, ni nani anahisi kwamba Mungu alishawahi msaidia? Wonderful. Hallelujah. Amen. So you see that God is wonderful. Kwa hivyo unaona kwamba Mungu ni wa ajabu. God has blessed you so much. Mungu amekubariki zaidi. He will give you more blessings. Atakuongezea baraka. Now for me after I experience the Holy Spirit, mimi nilipohisi Roho Mtakatifu, I say I don't want anything to block the blessings of God. Nilitaka sikutaka chochote kile ambacho kinaweza kukavunja baraka zile za Mungu. I don't want anything to block the presence of God. Sikutaka chochote cha kuzuia baraka za Mungu. I don't want anything to take away my ability to bless people. Mimi sikutaka kitu chochote cha kunizuia ile hali yangu ya kubariki watu. So whenever there is any kind of sinful thought in my mind, wakati wote ambalo niko na wazo mbaya ama wazo bovu kwenye mawazo yangu, I will take care of it right away. Nitalisu gulikia dakika hiyo hiyo if i'm angry with someone kama nimekasirika na mtu immediately the holy spirit will remind me saa hizo hizo roho mtakatifu atanikumbusha and i know anger is destructive na naniambia kwamba unajua hasira ni haribifu and then i will pray to god for help nitaomba mungu kwa msaada and then i'll choose to forgive na sasa nitaamua kumsamehe i don't want his anger <coughs> or my anger to affect me so i lose the blessings of god mimi sitaki ile asira ya huyo mtu ili kwamba pia ikani ikaniadhiri ili nipoteze baraka za mungu so whenever there is any kind of negative feeling kwa hivyo kama kuna mawazo mengine ya kinyume any sinful thought mawazo mengine ya kidhambi i know it's destructive najua hii ni haribifu and i pray to god na ninaomba mungu and i choose to obey na sasa huwa ninaamua kutii Let me tell you in the past wasani niwaambie siku zilizopita I have disobeyed God many times. Mimi nimekataa kumtii Mungu mara nyingi. I think I just ask God to forgive me. Nafikiria ninauliza Mungu anisamehe and he will forgive me. Na atanisamehe. Now that is true. Na hiyo ni ukweli. If you are truly repentant he will forgive you. Kwa kweli kama unatubu kutubu kwa dhati Mungu atakusamehe. But there will be destructive consequences of sin. Lakini sasa kutakuwa na majibu ya mwanguko kutokana na dhambi. When you get angry with people, unapokasirikia mtu it will hurt the relationship. Hiyo itakosesha ule uhusiano. It take away our joy. Itatuondolea furaha and make us afraid to pray to Jesus. Na sasa tunakuwa na uoga wa kumuomba kwa kumuomba Kristo. Jesus will forgive everyone who is repentant. Yesu atamsamea yeyote yule ambaye anatubu. But every time when we sin, lakini kila wakati tunapotenda dhambi, when we have anger, kama tuko na hasira, or when we are depressed, ama labda tumeshushwa roho, when we complain, wakati tunalalamika, it will make us unhappy. Itatufanya tusikuwe na furaha. It will take away our joy. Itatuchukulia furaha yetu. It will 
ruin the relationship with God. Itaribu usiano wetu na Mungu. So I said I don't want anything to take away my relationship with God. Nikasema kwamba sitaki chochote ambacho kitaniondolea uhusiano wangu na Mungu. I see that God is so wonderful. Ninaona kwamba Mungu ni wa ajabu. I want to respond to God with all my heart. Nataka kumuitikia Mungu na moyo wangu wote. Do you want to respond to God like that? Je, ungependa kumuitikia Mungu namna hiyo? And say I don't want anything to block my relationship with God. Na kwamba sitaki chochote ambacho kitazuia baraka zangu kutoka kwa Mungu. I want to be able to enjoy God and enjoy life. Nataka niwe na ule uwezo wa kusherekea Mungu na kusherekea maisha. I want to bless the people around me. Nataka nibariki watu walio kando yangu. Do you want to do that? Je, ungelipenda kufanya hivyo? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know God loves us all the time. Unajua Mungu anatupenda kila dakika. After you became a Christian, ulipofanyika mkristo, he keep working your life. Aliendelea kufanya kazi maishani mwako. In John chapter 16 verse 8. Katika Yohana 16 mstari wa 8, Yohana 16 mstari wa 8. There it says that the counselor, the, that means the Holy Spirit came to convict us of our sin of righteousness and of judgment. Inasema kwamba yule mshauri ambaye ni Roho Mtakatifu alikuja ili sisi tukapate kuhukumika kwa ajili ya dhambi katika haki ya Bwana. Have you noticed the Holy Spirit talking to you? Ushawahi gundua kwamba Roho Mtakatifu anaweza kukunenea? When you do something wrong, unapofanya kitu kibaya, but very often Christians say I don't want to listen to you. Kuna wakati mwingine ambapo Wakristo wanasema kwamba sitaki nikakusikize. Many very often Christians will say let me commit this sin. Na unajua Wakristo wengine wanasema kwa wacha mimi nitende hii dhambi. I'll ask you to forgive me later. Nitakuambia unisamee baadaye lakini kama nimekufanya kazi. Now an average Christian would have rejected God hundreds of times a week. Wakristo wengi wamemkataa Mungu mara zaidi ya mia moja kwa wiki moja. I have rejected God many times too. Mimi nimemkataa Mungu mara nyingi pia. When God told me uh, not to put away lust, wakati Mungu ananiambia kwamba uh, niachane na mambo ya tamaa, to put down negative feelings, ili nikaweke chini yale mawazo na kinyume, and not to tell lies, na nisiongee uongo. I found that I disobey God disobey God many times. Uona pata kwamba simtii Mungu wakati wakati mwingi. And I just ask God to forgive me afterwards. Na uwe naambia Mungu anisamee wakati kila wakati. But after I experience the Holy Spirit, lakini baada ya kushuhudia Roho Mtakatifu, and see how I can experience his love and joy. Na nikaona jinsi naweza navyoweza kuhisi upendo wake na amani yake. And notice that any time I sin it will take away the joy. Ninagundua kwamba kila wakati napotenda dhambi ile furaha ya Mungu inaniondokea. Whenever I sin when I pray I don't have that joy. Sasa kama nafanya dhambi na siombi naona ile furaha si So I said I don't want to lose that joy. Huona sema sitaki kupoteza ile furaha. And I don't want to lose the strong presence of God. Na sitaki nikapoteze ile uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu. I want to keep loving God and obeying God. Nataka niendelee kumtii Mungu na kumpenda Mungu. You know God has spoken to us many times each one of us. Unajua Mungu ametunenea mara nyingi kila mmoja wetu. But we rejected him many times. Lakini pia tumemkataa wakati mwingi. Does God get impatient with us? Je, Mungu huyu wa uanga ha, ha. Does God give you up? Je, Mungu huyu wa uanga anachoka na wewe? Does God stop talking to you? Je, Mungu huwa anawacha kuongea na wewe? Let me ask you. Acha niwaulize. If you talk to a friend, kama utaongea na rafiki, and the friend says I don't want to talk to you. Na rafiki yake akwambia kwamba mimi sitaki nikakuongelesha. Go away from me. Hebu niondoke nenda. I don't want to see you anymore. Sitaki kukuona tena. He said that to you a few times. Anakuambia tu hivyo wakati mchache. Do you still want to go to see him? Je, ungelipenda tena kwenda kumuona na amekufukuza? No. When you are rejected a few times, you don't want to see that person again. Unapokataliwa tu muda kidogo, hutaki kuona yule mtu aliyekukataa. How many times have we rejected God? Ni mara ngapi wewe umemkataa Mungu? Does God give up give up on you? Na je, Mungu huwa anachoka kukushughulikia? He keep talking to you. Anaendelea kukuzungumzia. Sometimes for years. Wakati mwingine miaka mingi. Before we obey him. Kama hatujamtii. God is really patient. Mungu huyu wetu ni Mungu wa kuvumilia. And in Chinese we say he he really has thick skin on the face. That means He doesn't feel shame. Ehem. Katika kichainisi kule kwao nasema kwamba Mungu ako na ngozi mbaya katika uso wake. Yaani inamaanisha kwamba huyu Mungu wanga haonei aibu wewe. 
For instance, you tell someone, don't see me, don't see me, don't come to me, and he keep coming to you, you say that person doesn't know shame. Wakati una mtu unapomwambia kwamba usinione sitaki usonge karibu na huyo mtu anaendelea kusonga karibu tunasema kwamba huyo mtu hananga aibu. Let me tell you it's because of God's love. Ni kwa sababu ya upendo wa Mungu that he is not stopped by shame. Ya kwamba yeye hazuiliwi na aibu. He doesn't feel shameful when he's rejected. Yeye huwa anasikia aibu kama anakataliwa. But it's wrong, wrong to disobey God. Lakini ni makosa zaidi kutomtii Mungu. And God is almighty and majestic. Na Mungu huyu ni mkuu, ni Mungu wa ukubwa kabisa. If God uses his almighty power, kama Mungu anatumia nguvu zake za kiungu, when we reject him we'll be struck dead right away. Kama tutamkataa basi atatuua wakati huo huo. But God doesn't do that. Lakini Mungu hafanyi hayo. If he does that there is no Christian living on earth. Come again. If he does that, if he strike us dead when we disobey him, there is no Christian living on earth. Kama tutamtii Mungu, alafu atumalize kila mmoja, hakuna Mkristo ambaye atakuwa naishi kwenye ulimwengu. Because we all have rejected him many times. Manake sisi sote tumemkataa mara nyingi. So every time I think of Jesus, kila wakati ninapofikiria kumhusu Yesu, how he continues to love me. Jinsi anavyoendelea kunipenda, continue to move my heart. Kuendelea kusukuma moyo wangu. Even when I rejected him. Hata wakati ambapo nimemkataa, I say God you're full of love. Nasema kwamba Mungu uko na upendo mwingi. I'm not worthy. Mimi sifai. You love me so much. Unanipenda zaidi. There is no one like you. Hakuna mwingine kama wewe. You know my heart is really moved by the love of God. Najua moyo wangu unavutwa sana upendo wa Mungu. Now I use this illustration again with my wife. Nitatumia mfano huu kwa picha yangu na mke wangu. If you see my wife being so nice to me all the time, unapoona mke wangu ni mwema kwangu kila wakati, And then if I make her unhappy. Alafu ananifanya tena nikasirike. If I don't appreciate what she does to me. Kama sitashukuru kwa kile chochote ambacho atanizunguka atanifanyia. If I make her unhappy. Kama nitamkasirisha, you will say to me, mtasema, why do you waste this relationship with your wife? Mbona unaharibu huu uhusiano uliyo kati yako na mke wako? Your wife is so wonderful. Mke wako ni wa ajabu. When you have this relationship, you should treasure it. Kama uko na huu uhusiano, ni lazima ukaudhamini. But let me tell you, God loves us more than my life wife loves me. Walakini wasini niwaambie kwamba Mungu ananipenda zaidi kuliko vile mke wangu ananipenda. But many people reject God without thinking about it. Na watu wengi wanamkataa Mungu pasipo kufikiria jinsi upendo wa Mungu ulivyo mkuu. Many people just don't care about God. Watu wengine hata hawajali kumhusu Mungu. Even when listening to sermons. Hata unaposikiza katika jumbe. I know that some people would fall asleep. Nimegundua kwamba wakati kutuko katika ibada watu wengine wanaanza kusinzia wakati. Show no expression. Oh, hawana hata mvuto na ile injili. But we see that God is so loving. Lakini napoona kwamba Mungu ni wa upendo. Then we really want to listen. Na utataka unatamani uendelee kusikiza and respond with our love. Na ukaitikia na na ile ule upendo. Now in our Bible verse Psalm 139 verse 5 katika kitabu cha Saburi 139 mstari wa 5 Saburi 139 mstari wa 5 where it says that God has enclosed me in front and behind me and he has laid his hand on me kinachosema kwamba Mungu amenifunikia ako mbele yangu ako nyuma yangu na ameniwekea mikono yake in other words he is in front of us and behind us and is laying his hand on us katika hiyo Zaburi 139 mstari wa 5 inamaanisha kwamba Yesu ako Mungu ako mbele yangu na ako nyuma yangu ameniweka katikati what this bible verse say is that God minister to us all the time. Maandiko haya ama kimstari huu inamaanisha kwamba Mungu anakuhudumia kila wakati. Now I want to say that you know I'm sorry to know that many Africans have been taken away from Africa to America or other places to be slaves. Na nisamahani kuambieni kwamba kuna Waafrika wengi walioshikwa mateka huku Afrika wakipelekwa kule eh, Amerika ili kufanywa wafungwa ama watumwa. And then when the master said to the slave, "Come Will the slave say no I don't want to come now? Je, wakati huyo mkubwa wa wafungwa anapoita huyo mfungo kwamba hebu njoo, huyo mfungo anaweza kataa kukuja? So the slave cannot reject the, the will of the master. Kwa hivyo huyo mfungo hawezi akakataa lile kitu ambacho mkubwa wake atamwambia. Whatever the master says he has to do. 
Chochote kile mkubwa waka na mwambia lazima uye mfungu wakifanye. I saw in a movie about slaves. Na niliona katika video kuhusu wafungwa. There was a white man, an old white man. Kulikuwa na mzungu mmoja ambaya likuwa ni mze. And there were some African boys running around. Na tulikuwa na vijana waki Afrika walikuwa na kimbia kimbia. And he told one African boy to stop. Aka ambia yule kijana mmoja waki Afrika kusimama. And lie on the floor in front of him. Na aka lalie mgongo mbele yake. And then he pulled up his shirt. Na aka toa shati lake. And put his feet on top of the tummy of the boy. Of the boy. Na aka kanyaga migu zake kwenye tumbo la yule kijana. To keep his feet. Feet warm. Ili akaweke miku zake zikuwe na joto. Is that is that fair? Je, iyo ni mzuri? Now, many slaves they will say it's unfair. Wafungwa wengi watasema kwamba aye kwa kweli yuo siyo mzuri. They'll be unhappy serving the master. Hawata kuwa na fura wana po mfanya yule mtu wa ukazi. They might say how come it's me serving you all the time and not you serving me? Watasema kwamba mbona tu mimi nikufanya yeye kazi na wewe hata huja haunifanya. Also, a slave cannot serve the master 24 hours a day. Kwa hivyo pia mfungwa hawezi akafanyia huyu mtu kazi masai 24. Let me ask you, is God our slave? Wacheni waulize, je, Mungu wetu ni mfungwa wetu? Is God our slave? Huyu Mungu ni mfungwa wetu. But he serves us better than any slave. Lakini anatu anatuhudumia vizuri kuliko hata wafungwa. He serves us 24 hours a day. Anatusugulikia masai 24 kwa simu. He serves us willingly. Anatuhudumia kwa kutaka. He never say, how come you reject me and I still have to serve you? Yeye uwanga asemi kwa mba mbona wewe una nikataa lakini lazima tu nikutumikie. You have rejected me many times already. How come I still have to serve you? Ume nikataa mara nyingi mbona watakatita mimi nikakuhudumie. Does God serve with an unwilling heart? Je, mungu huyo anatufanyia kazi katika moyo usio kuwa kupenda? Does he serve with an unwilling heart? Mungu huyo huwa anatufanyia sisi pasipo kupenda? God serves with a willing heart even when we reject him many times. Mungu anatuhudumia na moyo safi hata kama tumemkataa. So I hope that you say God is a loving God. Nafikiria kwamba kufika hapo tunasema kwamba kweli Mungu ni Mungu wa upendo. He works in our heart all the time. Anafanya kazi kwenye mioyo zetu kila wakati. He blesses us all the time. Anatubariki kila wakati. Even when we disobey him. Hata wakati tumemkataa. And we can see God's love everywhere. Tunaweza ona upendo wa Mungu kila mahali. When you drink water. Unapokunywa maji. It tastes good, right? Inaleta ile ladha mzuri, si ndio? It makes your throat feel good. Inakufanya kama ulikuwa na kiu unatulia. It came from the love of God. Ilitoka katika upendo wa Mungu. Do you like to eat food? Je, unapenda kula chakula? Do you like the taste? Je, unapenda ile ladha ya chakula kizuri? It came from God. Ilitoka kwa Mungu. Do you like to sleep? Ungelipenda kulala? You feel good, right? Unasikia ume relax, umepumzika. It also came from God. Pia hiyo ilitoka kwa Mungu. Everything God does is so good. Kila chochote kile Mungu anafanya ni kizuri. And he came to seek us. Na alikuja kututafuta and save us na kutuokoa. And work in our life 24 hours a day. Na anafanya kwenye maisha yetu kazi masaa 24 kwa siku. Even when we reject him. Hata wakati tumemkataa. And his love exceeds the love of anyone. Na upendo wake unashinda upendo yoyote yule duniani. Now would you say God is so wonderful? Sasa ungesema tu Yesu ni Mungu ni wa ajabu. If you have a wonderful wife like my wife, kama uko na Kama uko na mke wa ajabu kama mke wake, will you really say, wow, it's so good to have this wife? Je, utasema kwamba, hey, ni namuhimu sana kuwa na huyu mke wangu. But we have a God who is far better. Lakini tuko na mungu alie na juu zaidi. Would you say, wow, it's so wonderful to have God? Je, utasema kwamba, hey, ni ya ajabu kuwa na mungu. Who loves us all the time. Anaye tupenda kila wakati. So I hope that you always say with your heart from your heart. Natumaini kwamba utasema kutoka kwenye moyo wako. I have no one like Jesus. Sina mwingine kama Yesu. When I have so God so wonderful, 
kama niko na Mungu ni Mungu ni wa ajabu I want to treasure God nataka kumdhamini Mungu I want to have a good relationship nataka with niwe him. na uhusiano mwema na yeye I want to follow him nataka nimfuate and obey him na nimtii now how do you have a good relationship with God sasa utakuwa aje na uhusiano mwema na Mungu first you know that God doesn't like sin ya kwanza lazima ujue kwamba Mungu hapendi dhambi when God sees sin it's like when we see dung or feces wakati Mungu anapoona dhambi ni jinsi wewe unavyosikia unapoona kinyesi do you like the smell of a toilet je unapenda ile harufu ya cho now when God sees God sees sins he doesn't like it wakati Mungu anapoona dhambi azipendi so when you continue sin he doesn't like that unapoendelea kutenda dhambi Mungu hafurahi So when you want to come to God you say Lord I'm sorry for my sins. Sasa inafaa ukikuja kwa Mungu use uambie Mungu Mungu samahani kwa dhambi zangu. Actually sins destroy our life. Kwa kweli dhambi zinaharibu maisha yetu. It makes our family full of fights and quarrels. Inafanya familia zetu zinakuwa na ugomvi na mapigano. It makes you unhappy. Inakufanya hauna furaha. It take away the blessings of God. Inakuondolea zile baraka za Mungu. So we want to come to God and say Lord please forgive me. Tunataka ukikuja kwa Mungu na mwambie Mungu tafadhali nisamehe. I'm for, sorry for my sins. Na samahani kwa dhambi zangu. So that's number one. Please write that down. Repent and turn away from sin. Ya kwanza ndio hiyo kwamba ukatubu na ukageuke kutokana kwa dhambi. Not just repent. Sio tu kutubu, but repent and say I don't want to sin anymore. Lakini utubu na usaye kwamba sitaki kutana dhambi tena that you hate sin that the key is to hate sin eh la mno hapo ni ku kuchukia dhambi just like you don't like the feeling the taste the smell of feces jinsi zile haupendi kuona hata kuhisi ile harufu ya cho then you say i don't like sin ni useme kwamba mimi sipendi dhambi i want to turn away from sin nataka nigeuke kutoka kwa dhambi whenever any sinful thought comes to your mind wakati mawazo yote mabovu yanapokuja kwenye mawazo you say i don't want to let the sin destroy me unasema kwamba sitaki hizo dhambi zikaniharibu let me ask you this question hata niwaulie swali hili i use myself as an illustration mimi huwa tumia mwili wangu kama mfano I've gone to many places to bless different people in different countries Nimeenda maeneo mengi tofauti kubariki watu If you hear one day Pastor Yip has committed some serious and he cannot continue ministry Kama utasikia kwamba mchungaji Yip ametenda dhambi ambayo iko na uzito na hawezi akaendelea na huduma Would you feel sad about that Je utakasirishwa kuhusu hilo Utasikia uchungu The same thing will happen to you when you fall into sin. Na hiyo ndiyo pia itakufanyikia unapoingia katika dhambi. Your, your life will be destroyed. Maisha yako yataribiwa. Now if you see somebody who throws money into the ocean. Ukiona mtu anatupa anatupa pesa kwenye bahari, you will say don't 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 throw. Utamwambia usitupe usitupe nipe. But let me tell you your life is more precious than money. Lakini wata ni kuambie maisha yako ni ya muhimu kushinda pesa. So when you sin you're destroying your life. Unapotenda dhambi unaharibu maisha yako. So the first how to have the close relationship with God is to repent and hate sin and turn away from sin. Ya kwanza ukitaka kuwa na uhusiano uliodhabiti na Mungu ni lazima ukatubu na ukageuke kutoka kwa dhambi. And then number two, continue trusting Jesus as our savior. Na ya pili ukaendelea kumwamini Kristo kuwa mwokozi wako. And as our Lord, na kama bwana wako. Continue trusting God. Endelea kumwamini Mungu. Continue say Lord, I don't want to leave you. Endelea kusema Mungu sitaki kukuacha. I need you. Na kuhitaji. Number three. Ya tatu, to read the Bible and pray. Ukasome Biblia na kuomba. To think about the Bible all the time. Kufikiria kuhusu Biblia kila wakati. And pray to God all the time. Ukamuombe Mungu kila wakati. Now some people think of prayer like work. Watu wengine wanafikiria maombi tu ni kibarua. But you, if you believe that God loves you, lakini ukiamini kwamba Mungu anakupenda, every time in your prayer you can say God is loving me. Say kila wakati unapoomba unasema kwamba Mungu ananipenda. Tell them to say with oh, you. Okay, okay. God is loving me. Mambo haya urudie nyuma yangu. Mungu unanipenda. Mungu unanipenda. God is blessing me. Mungu unanibariki. Mungu unanibariki. God is with me to bless me. Mungu uko na mimi kunibariki. Mungu na mimi kunibariki. God is helping me. Mungu ananisaidia. Mungu ananisaidia. God is blessing me. Mungu ananibariki. Mungu ananibariki. Now this 
the spray of grace. Kwa hivyo hili ni ombi la neema. Saying what God is doing to us. Kusema kile ambacho Mungu anakusema. So when you are unhappy, kama sasa hauna furaha. You say God is loving me. Unasema kwamba Mungu unanipenda. I don't have to be unhappy. Mimi sifai kukasirishwa. And then next is praise and worship. Na ya pili ni kule kusifu na ibada. Then you say Lord I love you. Unasema kwamba Mungu nakupenda. Say Mungu nakupenda. I worship you. Ninakuabudu. Ninakuabudu. I need you. Nakuhitaji. Nakuhitaji. I want you. Ninakutaka. Ninakutaka. I want to come close to you. Nataka nikuje karibu na wewe. I like you. Ninakupenda. You notice my prayer is very direct. Unagundua kwamba maombi yangu inaenda direct. It's a direct relationship with God like with a friend. Ni uhusiano mwafaka kati ya ya ni kama uhusiano mwafaka kati yako na rafiki yako. I need you Jesus. Ninakuhitaji Yesu. I love you Jesus. Ninakupenda Yesu. I want you Jesus. Ninakuhitaji Yesu. I like you. Ninakupenda. Now when you pray like that, unapoomba hivyo, you experience peace and comfort and unaanza kuhisi amani, upendo na furaha. And you enjoy praying. Na unasherekea kuomba. It will not be hard work. Haitakuwa ni kibarua kigumu. Actually I enjoy praying for hours. Kwa kweli mimi huwa ninafurahia kuomba kwa masaa. And then number four, na ya nne, to love God. Kumpenda Mungu. Put God in the first place in our life. Kuweka Mungu mbele katika maisha yetu. To treasure God. Ili ukamdhamini Mungu. God is my best. Mungu ndiye bora wangu. I love him above everything. Ninampenda yeye kuliko chochote kile. And then number five, obey God. Na ya tano ni kumtii Mungu. So when we when we have to close relationship with God. We want to obey everything the Bible tells us to do. Kama uko na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu ni lazima kama uko na upendo wa Mungu ni lazima ungelitamani kuleta ule uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. Some people say that's too much to do. Watu wengine watasema kwamba ai hayo ni mambo mengi ya kufanya. But I tell you when you obey God, lakini nakwambia wakati unapomtii Mungu, you enjoy too. Unasherekea pia. When you love people, unapowapenda watu, people will like it. Watu watafurahia. When you are nice to people, kama wewe ni mwema kwa watu, your heart will feel happy. Moyo wako utakuwa na furaha. You have more friends. Utakuwa na marafiki wengi. When you tell people about Jesus, unapoambia watu kuhusu Kristo, and you'll be happy. Pia utakuwa na furaha. And when you see someone turn to Jesus, unapoona mtu akimgeukia Mungu, you feel joyful. Unasikia furaha. Okay, and then number six. Na ya sita, serve God. Ukamtumikie Mungu. Jesus said, if you do this good things to our little ones, you do it to me. Yesu alisema kwamba kama utafanya mambo haya kwa wale wadogo basi utanifanyia mimi. So when we serve God, God is very happy. Tunapomtumikia Mungu, Mungu anafurahishwa. And he will reward you. Na atakulipa. So when you see people come to church, kwa hivyo unapoona watu wakikuja kanisani, greet them with love and joy. Ukawasalimie kwa upendo na furaha. I'm so happy to see you. Niko na furaha kukuona. And you care about them. Na unawajali. Pray for them. Unawaombea. Visit them. Ukawatembelee. Don't think that you cannot do it. Usifikirie kwamba hauwezi fanya hivyo. And you can say to your pastor. Na pia unaweza ukamwambia mchungaji. Thank you for serving us. Asante kwa kutuhudumia. Thank you for helping us. Asante kwa kutusaidia. And when you do that you make your your pastor feels supported. Na sasa ukifanya hivyo utaonyesha mchungaji wako anahisi kwamba kwa kweli anasaidiwa. When you receive a prophet you are receiving Jesus. Unapompokea nabii unapokea Kristo. You will not lose your reward. Wewe hautapoteza ile thawabu yako. When you give a cup of cold water because that person is a Christian then you will not lose the reward. Kama basi utamfurahia na kuweka yule mtu ambaye ni Mkristo katika hali njema, hautapoteza thawabu yako. So you want to bless the Christians? Unataka kuwabariki wa Kristo? And bless the people outside? Na ukabariki watu nje? And bring them to Jesus? Na uwalete kwa Kristo? And Jesus will reward you in this life and in the future. Mungu atakupa thawabu katika maisha haya na mpaka yale maisha ambayo yanakuja. Now do you want to have a close relationship with God? Je, ungelipenda kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu? Now the six things we we'll say again. Mara ya sita tutasema tena. Put it in your memory. Ukaweka katika mawazo yako. Repent and turn away from sin. Ya kwanza kwamba ukatubu na ukageuke mbali na dhambi. And then number two, na ya pili, continue trusting God. Endelea kumwamini Mungu for forgiveness and for love. Ili kwamba akusamehe na kwa upendo. 
That's what we just said, the sixth thing. Which I just repeat it now. Amen. Because some people might think I'm saying something new. Mm -hmm. Tell them it's repeating. Tunarudia kile kitu ambacho tumesema ya kuanda. Sio sio mambo mapya sasa tunarudia ile ambayo mmesikwisha kuandika chini. And number 3, na ya tatu, read and meditate on the Bible and pray. Ukaombe, ukaombe sana na pia ukasome Biblia kwa bidii. And then at the same time enjoy praying to God. Na wakati huo ukafurahie kumuomba Mungu. Enjoy his love. Na ukafurahie upendo wake. And number four, love God. Na ya nne, mpende Mungu. Put in number one in our lives. Ukamweke awe wa kwanza katika maisha. And number five, na, obey God. Na ya tano, ni kumtii Mungu. Obey everything the Bible has told us to Ukatii obey. Ukatii chochote kile Biblia imekuambia kufanya. And number six, serve God. Na ya sita, ni kumtumikia Mungu. Amen. By loving people, unapowapenda watu. Helping people, unawasaidia watu. Preach the gospel, unahubiri injili. And help people to love God more. Na ukasaidia watu wakampende Mungu zaidi. And if you have this heart to follow God, na kama uko na huu moyo wa kumfuata Mungu, God knows it. Mungu anaijua and he likes it. Na anaifurahia and he will bless you na atakubariki. You know, I know one Christian in Hong Kong. Najua mkristo mmoja kule Hong Kong. I've driven out demons from her. Ambaye mimi nilimfukuza mapepo ndani yake. And she heard from Jesus all the time now. Na sasa anasikia kutoka kwa Kristo kile wakati. And she has been taken to heaven many times. Na amepelekwa mbinguni mara nyingi. One time Jesus showed her the book of record of her reward. Siku moja so that Christian asked for the book of record of reward of pastor you. Sasa huyu mama akauliza Yesu akamuonyesha kitabu cha dhawabu cha mchungaji Yip because I have helped her so much. Manake huyu mchungaji Yip amemsaidia mara mingi. So when she saw her own book of record of her rewards she was curious to see mine too. Alipoona kitabu chake cha dhawabu pia alikuwa na natamanio la kuona kitabu cha mchungaji. And then Jesus told an angel to take my record of reward. Na sasa Yesu akatuma malaika kuleta kile kitabu cha dhawabu zake. And then she said the book was thick. Na akamwambia kwamba kitabu chako ni kinono and it was covered with gold. Na kwenye juu kimefunikwa na dhahabu. And on top it says my beloved son Timothy Yip in Chinese. Na sasa kwenye lugha ya Kichina kimeandikwa kwamba mwanangu mpendwa Timothy Yip when I heard that, I really say, Lord, I'm not worthy. Because I was weak when God chose me. I've sinned and rejected God many times. But God continued working my life. And he filled me with the Holy Spirit. And to motivate me to change. And after I change and serve him, he recorded everything I do for him. And he's happy with me. I say, God, I'm not worthy. But you give that to me, I really appreciate that. And I want to say to you, even though we are not worthy, you also can have a thick book of record of your rewards. If you want to follow God now more and obey Him, and have a good relationship with Him, He knows your heart. I encourage you to take this message, not just a message on one day. But to be your life message. To say God loves me so much. I want to respond with love. And with excitement. And love God and follow God. And obey God and serve God. Do you want to do that? You know, we want to respond like Peter. When Jesus wanted to wash the feet of the disciples, when he came to Peter, he said, you cannot wash my feet. But Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. And then Peter was responsible 
was na sasa pita kuitikia kwake kulikuwa then don't just wash my feet usinyoshe tu miguu peke yake sasa wash my whole person ukanyosha na mwili wote so he really respond with his feelings kwa hivyo yeye aliitikia na hisia zake with his whole person na mwili wake wote now when we come to god tunapokuja kwa mungu don't just respond oh yes lord usitikie tu ah ndio bwana oh I'll follow you. Nita kufuata. But you say God is so good. Lakini useme kwamba Mungu ni mwema. He is the best in the whole world. Yeye ndiye bora zaidi ulimwenguni. You respond for your whole life. Unaitikia na maisha yako. You know I give my whole life to Jesus. Najua nilipenda maisha yangu yote kwa Kristo. I'm 65. Niko na miaka 65. Many people retire already. Watu wengi tayari wamekwisha stahafu. I don't want to retire. Mimi sitaki kustahafu. But I'm serving for free. Lakini ninafanya haya mambo kwa bure tu. If I retire at 70, kama nitastaafu na miaka 70, that's too short 5 years only. Imebakia tu miaka mitano peke yake na nastaafu. If I retire at 80, kama nitastaafu na 80, that's only 15 years. Ni miaka 15 ilo baki. I want to serve God until I die. Nataka kumfanyia Mungu kazi mpaka nife. Amen. Even now I don't receive any salary. I don't have any salary. Wakati huu mimi sina mshahara. I don't receive any money for my ministry. Sipokei pesa zote kutoka kwenye huduma. It's all volunteer work. Lakini ni kazi yangu tu. And I use my money. Na ninatumia fedha zangu. But I want to continue to serve God. Lakini nataka kuendelea kumtumikia Mungu. Because God is so good. Manake Mungu ni mwema. I hope you respond to God with love. Na fikiria utamuitikia Mungu kwa upendo. Jesus I love you. Yesu ninakupenda. With all your heart. Na moyo wako wote. Jesus I love you. Yesu nakupenda. Jesus I want to follow you. Yesu nataka kukufuata. I don't want the lazy Christians Sitaki anymore. Sitaki kuwa mkristayo ambaye ni mvivu. I want to love God with all my heart. Nataka kumpenda Mungu na moyo wangu wote. All day long. Oh, kwa kila siku. Jesus I love you. Yesu nakupenda. With all our heart. Na moyo wangu wote. From your heart say, "Oh Jesus." Kutoka kwenye moyo wako hebu sema, "Oh Yesu." If you love God with all your heart, kama unampenda Mungu na moyo wako, you will be able to experience his peace and love and joy. Utaanza kuhisi amani yake na furaha yake. Oh Jesus. Oh Yesu. I love you. You. Nakupenda. I want to follow you. Nataka kukufuata. I want to obey you. Nataka nikutii. Oh Jesus. Oh yes. I need you. Nakuhitaji. Oh hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. How many want to have a close relationship with God? Wangapi wangelipenda kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na Mungu? How many want to respond to God with all your heart? Wangapi wangependa kumuitikia Mungu na moyo wao wote? All your soul na nafsi yako. All your mind na akili zako. All your strength na nguvu zako. Amen. And it will bring blessings to you. Na italeta baraka kwako. Now I hope it's not just for today only. Na naamini sio kwa leo peke yake. But every day when you wake up, lakini kila siku unapoamka. Jesus so good. Yesu ni mwema. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus loving me. Yesu anipenda. I can enjoy God. Mimi naweza nikasherekea Mungu. Oh Jesus. Oh Yesu. And all day long. Na kwa kila siku yote. You want to spend time loving God. Unataka kuwa na muda mwingi ukimtumikia Mungu. And whatever you do. Na chochote utakachokifanya. Sweeping the floor. Unapofagia. You say hallelujah. Unasema hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Asante Yesu. Whatever you do. Chochote unachokifanya. You love Jesus. Unampenda Yesu. Oh. Let us all stand together. Tukasimame wote. And repent to God. Na tukatubu kwa Mungu. And say Lord I have not loved you much. Na useme kwamba Mungu sijakupenda zaidi. I want to have a close relationship with you. Nataka niwe na uhusiano wa karibu na wewe. And I invite you to come forward too. Na ningeliwaomba pia mkusonge huku mbele that you you know i can pray for you ili kwamba akapate kuombea wale wangependa kuombewa you might experience the peace or the love or the joy of the lord unaweza ukahisi upendo ama amani ya bwana or experience burdens go away unasikia mizigo zimeondolewa so if you want to pray for you come for lola sai ngwa konyanga ndi 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 nd